Snowflakes are fascinating ice crystals that form in the atmosphere when water vapor condenses directly into ice. As more vapor condenses onto a nascent snow crystal, it grows and develops, and that is when its ornate patterns emerges. Here are some interesting facts about snowflakes. No two snowflakes are alike. Each snowflake is unique in its structure. The idea that no two snowflakes are alike has been widely accepted, given the incredibly complex and diverse formation process. A snow crystal begins with the formation of a small hexagonal plate and branches sprout from the six corners when the crystal grows larger. As it tumbles through the clouds, the crystal experiences ever-changing temperatures and humidities, and each change makes the arms grow a bit differently. The exact shape of the final snow crystal is determined by the precise path it took through the clouds. But the six arms all took the same path, and so each experienced the same changes at the same times. Thus, the six arms grow in synchrony, yielding a complex yet symmetrical shape. And since no two snow crystals follow the exact same path through the clouds as they fall, no two look exactly alike. Snowflakes typically have a hexagonal symmetry due to the molecular structure of ice. This hexagonal symmetry is a result of the way water molecules arrange themselves when freezing. The process begins with the freezing of a water droplet, typically on a tiny particle in the atmosphere. As more water vapor freezes onto the initial crystal, additional water molecules align themselves in a hexagonal pattern. The hexagonal symmetry emerges because the water molecules arrange themselves in a way that minimizes the energy of the crystal lattice. Each arm or branch of a snowflake is a separate crystal, and the conditions under which it forms, such as temperature and humidity, determine the intricate details of its structure. This variability results in the intricate and diverse shapes of individual snowflakes. There are countless snowflake shapes, as the conditions may change during formation, snowflakes often show several different types in its unique structure. Let's start with a very simple shape which is sometimes the basis for other more complex structures. Plate crystals are flat, hexagonal crystals with six broad flat arms extending from the center. Plate crystals often form in milder temperatures and moderate humidity conditions. Before we're going to dive deeper into the snow crystal world, a huge shout out to Professor Kenneth Librecht, who allowed me to use some of his work in this video. He works at the California Institute of Technology, also known as Caltech, and studies the molecular dynamics of crystal growth, including how ice crystals grow from water vapor, which is essentially the physics of snowflakes. The way snow crystals grow depends strongly on the temperature and humidity in the clouds. This is summarized in the snow crystal morphology diagram. It shows that the largest, most photogenic stellar snow crystals only grow in a narrow temperature range around 15 degrees Celsius. Needles and columns are best found around 6 degrees Celsius. Capped columns appear when the temperature changes as the crystals grow. Remember these are temperatures in the clouds. It is often substantially warmer on the ground. What is really interesting is that there is plates then column, and then there is plates again. There are two different conditions which lead to the exact same snowflake grow. And the reason is, nobody knows. It's a secret that still needs to get investigated. Now that you have seen this diagram, you will know exactly the conditions in the clouds when you discover a snowflake. You can also see that more elaborate branched crystals grow when the humidity is high. Simple prisms grow when the humidity is low. Exactly why snow crystals grow this way remains an unsolved scientific puzzle. The growth behavior of ice depends on the molecular structure and dynamics at the crystal surface, and this is all so complicated that no one really understands it. Columnar snowflakes are elongated hexagonal prisms. They can be needle-like or have broader columns. They thrive in temperatures that allow for the growth of elongated structures without much branching. These conditions often occur in the range of minus 5 to minus 10 degrees Celsius. Columns might look simple, but there's a lot happening on the surface and within. Because the basal facets have a large surface area, the prism facets grow faster than the center of the basal facet can fill in. 
That means the snowflake is at least partially hollow. Dendrite crystal snowflakes are one of the most common and recognizable types of snowflakes. The term dendrite is derived from the Greek word dendron, meaning tree, which aptly describes the branching tree-like patterns of these snowflakes. Dendrite snowflakes have a well-defined branch structure with six arms or branches extending outward from a central hexagonal core. The branches themselves can also exhibit secondary and tertiary branching, creating a highly intricate and symmetrical design. Dendrite snowflakes are often larger than other types of snowflakes. The extended branches contribute to their overall size and delicate appearance. Some dendrite snowflakes can grow several millimeters in size, making them more visible and easily distinguishable. Small changes in temperature can result in significant alterations to the branching pattern, leading to the unique and intricate designs seen in dendrite snowflakes. Dendrite crystals typically form in regions of the atmosphere with higher humidity levels. The presence of supercooled water droplets allows for the rapid growth of the snowflake's branches as it moves through varying temperature and humidity zones. It really fascinates me to discover a unique snowflake while having a little more knowledge to figure out how this frozen miracle arised, but therefore we need to dive a little deeper into the birth process of a snow crystal. Everybody knows it snows from the clouds. Clouds are made of liquid water droplets. It's kind of micron scale droplets. And when it cools down, it will start to freeze, but not right away. At minus five to minus 10 degrees Celsius, the cloud will start to freeze. If a droplet freezes, it will start to grow and it will absorb water vapor from the air and the droplets around. It will start to evaporate because the vapor pressure of liquid supercooled liquid water is higher than the vapor. So this single grow that it takes may be about 100,000 droplet evaporating to make a good sized snowflake and eventually then these fall to the ground. But why are snow crystals so small? Most of those formations won't get bigger than just a few millimeters. The short explaining is that larger and more intricate snowflakes tend to form in colder temperatures with higher humidity, providing ample opportunities for crystal growth and aggregation. The more complicated answer is that snow crystal growth is based on particle diffusion and this can produce a branching instability. In order to keep growing, the molecules have to diffuse through the air from the surrounding medium where its supersaturation is high. And if these points stick out a little farther into the supersaturated medium. When you want to dive even deeper, I really recommend to visit snowcrystals.com or search for Ken Librecht on YouTube as there are also some uploads of his presentations. There's a lot more to learn and explore about snow crystals. There are hundreds of variations with unique structures. If you want to see more snow crystal videos, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you in my next video.